Andy Serkis here and just thought you might like to see uh, as we sort of come to the end of the trilogy, the Caesar cycle as we like to call it, um, uh, a little catch up on, on what we're calling the six scenes that made Caesar. This was one of the most um, emotional scenes to shoot in, in the first film. And it really, uh, you know, it was this first sense of, of him being rejected from his, his father figure. James Franco is, you know, his character Will is very distressed and he's trying to calm him down and, and Caesar is just, uh, is, is just kind of trying to fathom out what, what's going on. Caesar's furiously trying to look into, uh, into, into Will's eyes and he's banging on the glass and, and going crazy. And I remember when we were, when we were shooting that, it was, um, it was a, sort of a breakthrough scene in a way, uh, it, and a real shift in perspective. We start to see the story at that point from Caesar's point of view for the first time. Up, up to that point, it's really been Will's journey and his, his journey as a scientist trying to find this Alzheimer's cure that's, that's gone wrong. And then, and then there is this sort of amazing sort of journey where the point of view starts to shift and it becomes Caesar's and that's that this is in fact the key scene where it happens. This part of the story is after they've they've the apes have crossed San Francisco Bridge and are, are running away to freedom led by Caesar and Will is chasing after them and Will tries to convince him that, that he should come back, come that, that he doesn't want to see Caesar in danger and that he should come home. At this point, Caesar looks him square in the eyes and says the, what, you know, three of the four words that he says in this movie. The first word that he ever utters in the movie uh, using human language is no. And then, and then these three words, Caesar is home is uh, is what what he says to will and it's a, it's a very tender moment a kind of which both has you know this there's it is saying goodbye to his father but also saying i know what i've become now and i know what my place is and i know that i've arrived and um it's a sort of a real kind of moment of transition where he's surrounded by his fellow apes and Will, James Franco's character, realises that he has to say goodbye to him and that this is, this is the final departure really and that there's a mutual respect and love between them but uh, they can no longer exist uh, in the way that they have done before. Ash has been shot and the apes are trying to work out how to respond. So they go down, I'm going to start playing the scene now. Doors part and they see the humans standing there. The, horse, the, the apes are all, all on horse, ho, ho, horseback. We had very well trained horses. Um, but they they would they did not like human beings pretending to be apes riding them. So there was this extraordinary situation where they, they were quite skittish, and we had to be very still for the scene. That all the apes had come down, and we were sitting on our horses. And I I had a horse called Shirley, and uh, Shirley was not happy about an ape riding on her back. And she was this very male-looking horse, very brutish-looking, but actually very very skittish. And so it started off with. With, with, with me riding forward very slowly. I'm just gonna play the moment actually, now I'm gonna relive the horror because what happened was uh, that as I s sort of slowly march forward and it's very uh, intense and I'm looking down at Jason Clark's character and I say these words, apes do not want war. And as soon as I go, apes, Shirley just starts to run sideways and I run sideways with her and I'm trying to hold her in position. And every single time we kind of came to this moment, Shirley would, would buck. So it ended up, after we'd shot it a few times and Shirley had you know, thrown me this way, that way and gone over it all over the place, I ended up having to shoot sitting on a ladder, and, um, which was not great. Because every time the doors opened and we reshot this moment where, you know, Jason would walk out and then Gary Oldman would come out, you know, there would be, in fact, more and more apes not sitting on horses and more apes sitting on ladders. Anyway, not to destroy the myth, you know, it was a very powerful moment, <laughs> but I have to give you a little bit of an insight into what was actually going on.
So Cobra has been really Caesar's cause celebre in a way. He's he's almost brought Cobra to the to the to the light side, if you like, and thought he'd been able to convince him that he should have empathy for human beings. But Cobra has been has had has been brutalized so badly uh, in the laboratory and, and has been experimented on and, and can have no forgiveness for human beings and which is why his his the conflict has arisen because he is of his difference of opinion with Caesar Caesar is now in this terrible position where he knows to ensure the future of his species to ensure the safety of his species and to avoid conflict escalating even further that he has to take Cobra's life which goes against every single thing that he believes and one of the fundamental founding rules of, of their society which is ape shall not kill ape. So he looks down into Cobra's eyes and Cobra looks at him and says and reminds him of this and says ape shall not kill ape and Caesar looks at him and he has a very steely look in his eyes as he reaches down and we're not quite sure what he's going to do and he grabs Cobra and for a moment you think he's going to lift him up. He looks around and he sees, he, he, he sees all the apes that are wounded including Maurice and then he returns, he looks back at Cobra and then he says the words, you are not ape. Not ape. And then he releases him. And Cobra falls, falls to his death. And then we return to, to Caesar. The look in Caesar's eyes at that point is both a sense of something that he's had to do. He's had to do this to ensure the future of his species, but he knows that he is forever changed, that he will carry that guilt with him for the rest of his life. The apes have been living now in, in, in a high degree of conflict, they've been fired on from all angles. They're they're pretty much decimated. There are, you know, the, there are still survivors, but they've been wounded. And in the last foray by the human beings, there's been a massive launch and massive attack, and uh, and and uh, many of them have been killed. So this scene was a uh, was an extraordinary uh, scene to shoot. Um, because it was really the beginning of Caesar's transition from, from this empathetic character who is trying to peacefully find a solution to, uh, to, to the conflict, to this moment that just rips him in half. And as I was saying earlier, you know, that, that's why this movie for me was all about empathy and about, about the ability to forgive and why the inspiration for the third part of the movie for me was really looking inside myself and, and thinking how would I be able to cope with what Caesar has to go through? Would I be able to, to, to forgive were, were this to happen to my family? So this is the beginning of that journey. So Caesar's finally led his people to what in effect is the promised land. He has become this um, Moses-like character. We've seen the exodus across the hills. And then when he reaches the point uh, where, where, you know, which looks like paradise, he settles down. And as he sits down, he slumps and he realizes that his life is ebbing away, that he can go no further. And there's a very connective um, scene between Maurice, his his com his conciliary throughout the three movies. Um, they have a very special relationship. He's this sagacious old orangutan who's been such a devo devout, uh, devoted rather follower of Caesar, um, and he knows now that the life is ebbing away from Caesar's eyes. And it was an incredible scene to play. In fact, we shot this halfway through. Uh, no. the filming of War for the Planet of the Apes. So it was a very bizarre switch to go from um, all of the other activity in the, in the prison sequences to go and shoot this on a set and to suddenly leap to the end of the movie. And in fact, what has ended up in the movie was the very, very final take. Um, we've played it in lots of different ways, leaving it slightly more ambiguous as Caesar uh, closes his eyes and we, we can sense that he's drifting away. But in the very final take, we decided to, to have Caesar completely fold and cave and his body collapses and he rolls over and then 
uh, he's, he's, he starts to slump and then we, we, we literally see him uh, passing. And Maurice is there and it's incredible, this acting that, that uh, Karen Carnival, who plays Maurice, is phenomenal in this scene as, she, as she's totally bereft and, and, and weeps the, and mourns the loss of, of their great leader. Um, almost uh, unbeknownst to the other apes. And it was a really, um, Matt Reeves's choice for this moment was very interesting that he wanted, he wanted the, the uh, excitement for all of the other apes to be, you know, the realization that they are now safe and that they have, they have found their, their, their new promised land. Um, and the children are playing and it's this real kind of sense of an idyll, this new idyll that they've arrived at. Um, and, that, and that Caesar, he's, he's almost, he, he passes easily because he knows that he's done his job and he can see that, that there is a real future for his kind now. A safe, it's in a safe place. And then, as I say, his, his body folds, folds over and, and he passes. And, and we are left then with um, what Caesar has, the last image Caesar has, which is of his kind in this place that will forever be their new home. If you like that, check out the first 17 minutes of brand new circus-produced Planet of the Apes Last Frontier game, or you can watch Andy and Woody Harrelson responding to IGN comments.